Hello and welcome back to Lifeboat Higa. I'm going to show you around a bit today and tell you a bit more about myself. Hope you enjoy. Like and subscribe so you can follow the bills along. Thank you. Hello, welcome back. Today's video is going to be slightly different as I want you as viewers to participate and tell me what you would like to see and any hints and tips because I'm very engrossed in this project as you might have guessed from my previous videos but it would be nice to get some feedback about what you'd like to see in the future um, more details less details whatever anything that's helpful really so that would be good anyway a bit about myself I am, my name is Petra I'm Dutch but I've been living on the east coast of Britain for 15 years now, near enough. Um, decided to have a career change and lots of other stuff. Um, I've been living on boats for about 30 years now. Um, had loads of different kind of boats, started off on a Dutch barge, built my own 36 foot sailing yacht, took it to the Baltic for six months, sailed around, sailed to Britain many a time. And I ended up here for a change of career really and I have been living on my latest Dutch barge from 1903 for about seven years now and as I'm getting older 55 time ticks on um, I thought I wanted something a bit less maintenance because having an old steel barge takes a lot of my time and the last time she was out of the water and I was on my back or my car crawler Doing her bottom, I thought I can't be doing this for much longer. I love the boat, but I just want something a bit less maintenance. I know that any boat is a lot of maintenance, but hey ho. So anyway, um, me and my partner started looking at what kind of boat we'd want. And for some reason, we started looking at Dutch motor barges. And we got to a point where I said, well, that's just ridiculous. We go from one barge to another barge, might as well keep what we've got. And for some reason, I don't even know how the link came about, that we started looking at lifeboats, which is GRP, less maintenance, less worries. Um, and the space inside is just amazing for the length. My previous, my, my barge at the moment is 46 foot, but she's only about 12 foot wide. And that's the widest part of the boat, so inside... Uh, because of the side decks and everywhere, everything, there's not a lot of space really, especially if there's two people and you have to walk past people going, excuse me, excuse me. Anyway, so we started looking at lifeboats. Most of them seem to be around seven and a half metres, eight metres, um, which is not really enough space for what we needed. And we came across this one, Huger, um, 36 foot, 13 foot wide. And the nice thing about a lifeboat is that you get the width more or less all the way along, which is lovely because you don't get that on many boats. So I think it's the most space you can buy for your money, really. Um, the standing height before I started was about eight foot. It's still not too bad, even though with the floors and the floor beams in. I had to do a lot of prep work and you saw some of that hopefully in my previous videos. I didn't film too much of that because it was dusty, horrible work. Um, but yeah, well, I'll show you what we've done so far really. I will start by showing you the forward cabin which will be the bedroom which you will have seen in the last couple of videos. Very much work in progress, as to be expected, as everywhere else on the boat. A nice big solid bulkhead there, out of solid wood, which is nice. This is supposed to be the seating area. It's more like storage at the moment. Again, like everywhere else on the boat, you keep moving stuff around. Because despite all the space, you do not have to need... To move stuff around to be working in certain areas going further down this will be the seating area which again is full of building materials i do have a shed and a container to store stuff in but you need 
things on board just to crack on with things. You don't want to be walking to and fro the shed for every bit of wood you need. This will be the kitchen area, which is now my workbench, as you can see. All this is going to be a big wraparound window. I will step back a bit so you can see down the length of the boat. Get an idea of the space. This bit here is I'll show you in is kind of a tray I made where the solar panels are going to be sitting in. So it's slightly lowered and the solar panels should sit flush with the deck. So the side profile of the boat is not affected by anything. This is a lovely space for both the shower and the heads. I have done a small tour before, so this might all look familiar to you. But I had the camera in portrait instead of landscape, so I don't think that many people bothered watching it, to be honest. So this is a step up onto the engine. There's a big engine in this boat. It's a 140 horse Steyr engine, four cylinder, turbocharged. And she doesn't half move, even without revving the engine too much. She easily does about eight knots, which is a nice cruising speed, especially as I'm used to sailing, which if you do a four knots average, you're bombing along in my view. Um, loads of water left, which were the emergency supplies. And this is the helming seat, if the cloth wants to come off. can't see out the windows at the moment because I've got a cover over it the seat and the doors are hung which is amazing to have the space to just step in and not have to crawl in and bang your head on sliding hatches and stuff and then you step out into the cockpit which again has got lovely space to be sitting outside i'm looking forward to spring coming so i can take the cover off and actually make it an outside space that's just storage and everything i'm very glad to say that i've got rid of most of the orange on the inside it's just the light shining through and of course the boat being orange it comes through as kind of a pinky orange light and I can tell you to work in that it's horrible you can't read your tape measure or anything really and uh, with the insulation going in which is about two layers of 50 mil foam board close cell doesn't take on any water hopefully keeps the heat in in winter and the, the heat out in summer does a double job really um, I told you about the frames I laminated in, 13 layers of 9 mil ply to give me the 100 mil I need, plus a bit extra, because of course the electrics and things will have to go in. That red hose you see there is going to be one of the drains for the tray for the solar panels, you don't want them sitting in water. So yes, that's hopefully giving you a good idea of progress and how things are going. So, well, hopefully that was um, giving you an idea of what I've been doing and how far along we are. I'd like to um, ask you again, if you have any suggestions or questions, please comment below and uh, like and subscribe so you can follow the build along. Thank you and see you next week. Bye.